In this video we continue with our Yanmar engine service in part 2 we're looking at the seawater cooling on the 3YM30AE and this is the same pump that's fitted to the 3YM20 and the 2YM15 but of course first we're going to show you how it works because if you know how it works you know how to fix it and of course it wouldn't be one of our videos without showing you a few top tips. So stay with us for the whole video. And my engine service part two, seawater cooling. The pump is located on the front of this engine, which makes it extremely difficult to get at. Yeah, raw water pumps on the front there. You can see that there. There's of course the, uh, that's going to be a bit tricky to get at, they usually are on these. Okay, so we know it's difficult to get at, but why is it called a raw water or seawater pump? OK, let's dive in at the beginning. Now, not all cooling systems are the same, but basically, they work in the same way. Let's explain. Water will enter the system through a through hole and a valve, or through a drive leg and a valve. Most boats will look something like this. The seawater, or raw water, will then be drawn up into a seawater filter, something like this. It's important to remember at this point the seawater is being drawn or sucked into the pump. The seawater pump can be gear driven, belt driven, or in some cases even the electrically driven. And they look something like this. The location of your seawater pump can vary depending on your engine. Some are on the front, some are on the back, and some are even on the top. Wherever your seawater pump is located, it's important it has an anti siphon valve. In most cases, that will look something like this. From the pump, water will be pushed through the inner core of your heat exchanger and that will look something like this raw water or salt water goes through the inner cores and the outer jacket has the engine coolant around it hot coolant from the engine is pumped by the coolant pump into the heat exchanger this is called by the salt water in the inner matrix and then returns back to the engine cooler coolant pump on some engines is called the circulation pump and there's also a thermostat in this circuit which controls the flow of coolant. It's this exchange between the coolant and the salt water which gives the heat exchanger its name. The now hot seawater is pushed into the exhaust elbow. We've done a couple of other videos where we covered the problems around exhaust elbows and the water injection. I'll put a link in the uh, description. The hot seawater and the exhaust gases will be pushed down the pipe into something like this a muffler or water lock. Some boats have a separator which separates the exhaust gas from the raw water. This allows them to run a dry exhaust from this point forward. Now in addition to the engine heat exchanger, some engines have an oil heat exchanger which cools the oil. It works on the same principle. You can pause the video here to familiarise yourself with the different components within the cooling system. I'm not going to say so. We, uh, we've we actually filmed all of the replacement of the impeller on, uh, on the pump on the Yanmar. The problem is that this footage hasn't come out particularly well and uh, it's missing quite a lot of detail. So what I wanted to do was with this spare pump to show you easy, uh, the easy way to do things with it out. Then when you go to do yours, if your um, bulkhead is here, like the one on Peter's boat, you'll know how to do it um, without having to, you know, squint at the, uh, at the video I've made. Now, just before we start, a couple of things you're going to need. Um, you're going to need a small spanner, a small wrench, this one's 7mm that fits on there. You're going to need a, an old screwdriver um, to help you get 
this out the impeller um, unless you have either the proper impeller tool like this one or you have a pair of long nose pliers like these. Now I can't find my long nose pliers. We've had a really good search, can't find them, don't know where they've gone. They're probably in the bottom of a marina somewhere or I've lent them to someone and never got them back. But what we're gonna show you um, is how to get them out actually with, with either of those two tools or an old screwdriver, the pair of old screwdrivers. Let's just go through the parts. So um, this is a spare belt. Now, the belts don't wear out, to be honest. A um, bit like a auxiliary uh, belt for your alternator. They, they, don't, they don't wear out unless they're adjusted wrong. Um, but we've got a spare one anyway. And that belt fits on there and is driven it's just a standard v-belt um let's see if i can get the part number off of this part number is one zero four five one one dash seven eight seven eight zero so that's the the v-belt the other thing that they give you in the kit is obviously the impeller impeller and the pin that goes through the center now some of these pins are threaded and some aren't anyway this one has a spare pin that you can change that stainless steel threaded at one end uh, threaded all the way along and it has a slot at one end for a screwdriver and it's pointed at the other end so that you can screw that in there is a spare or a new set of the bolts that go around the outside here and part number for them is 12899024520-6 and then of course the o-ring which goes under this plate um, part number for that is x 02173475 and they all come in a kit if you buy it from uh, Yanmar as a genuine part. There's also a user manual, tells you how to put it in and out. And of course glycerine, always use glycerine or dish soap. Never use Vaseline or any product which is derived from petroleum, petrol, gas, because it will damage the lobes on the impeller. So without any more ado let's whiz the front off of this face plate um, off this pump and you can see how it all works Now, you can see inside, this pump's been made up, let's move these bits, this pump's been made up for some time, um, let's make sure that you can see it, this pump's been made up for some time, and that cam that's in there is forcing that lobe flat. Now that me that it's okay, but what that means is that this impeller, despite being new or nearly new, um, is going to be mis misformed or deformed. So what we actually you can see it's on there. It's had something in it as well. Um, what we're actually going to do is take this out and put um take it out and leave it out 
so that this impeller doesn't get deformed otherwise when they go to use this pump um, it's only going to work or it's only going to be efficient on the other lobes so one two three four five the sixth one isn't going to have the same effect is it so to get this out as I say you can use the pucker extractor you can use a pair of long nose pliers which is what I normally do and just grab one load and lobe and pull it out or you if you're careful two screwdrivers and go into the same position that that pin is in the center and literally like that just pull it out really easy Whoop. so easy that I dropped it on the floor now you can see what I was talking about with this impeller and that lobe look it's staying in that position so as that goes round to there on that pump it's not going to have the same effect now let's just check that feels okay the inside of the pump feels okay it's been protected but it doesn't seem to have anything on there glycerine wise there's a little bit of wear on it now what you can do with a screwdriver you can just feel that or with your fingernail just feel there's a little bit of wear on it that's not too bad um, so what we have to do on the engine is we have to put the impeller back in which is reasonably easy um, and we have to put this o-ring back in and we have to put this cap back on now if your cap is worn in here with this type you can flip that over and in fact that's what I did on one of the pumps on one of the engines it was worn quite badly inside it had some degradation in the center um, and so I flipped it over like that it still fits still lines up with the o-ring in let's show you what it was we did that's in pretty good condition too there's some slight wear on there but nowhere near like there was on the other one and you can see the o-ring still actually attached so this one no writing on this side so probably a pattern part um nothing wrong with it it's just a a bronze plate you can see this pinky color which means that uh, there's a bit of de-zinking gone on so uh, I think this one might be more brass than bronze but the I mean I can see there's wear on there I can just feel it with my finger just you know it's microns not uh, millimeters um, so I will clean out the track where this o-ring goes I will take this o-ring off put a new o-ring in and then take the impeller out um, replace it let's take the impeller out first and show you what that's like I suspect it's not that badly warm because this being the starboard engine um, it doesn't get run as much it's probably got about half the hours that the uh, port engine's got that's because the port engine does the hot water and prioritizes the uh, batteries now uh, right let's uh, get that out I'll show you. right so this is the impeller that came out and uh, it promptly then flew straight off the front of the engine and down into that dirty old bilge water down there where it was almost impossible for me to get out so let's have a look well it's cracked and craved along there as you can see cracked and craved little bit of damage there it's a pattern part I think because it's got a thread on the inside um, and it hasn't got Johnson written on it it's pretty well chewed up on this side which is the side that goes up against the um, back of the pump there's not much wear on that side okay new one in face plate back on new o-ring lots of glycerine bob's your uncle there you go so rather than go and buy a new plate which are quite expensive 
and you have to buy the o-ring as well in the kit just flip that over so when these go in lots and lots of glycerine on this and I'll show you with this one because we're going to leave the impeller out you don't need to have um, a tie wrap around it or push it in you, you simply put lots and lots of glycerine on here you line it up roughly in position which is like that and then you push it in now you hear lots or you see lots of waffle about those impeller lobes being the right way around okay because of the rotation you note know that when I turn this wheel in whichever direction I turn it those lobes have the room to crush and go the right way around and if I turn it the other way there it goes and it's only going to affect one lobe when that pump first starts up and there's lots of glycerine in there so you're not going to damage the impeller lobes they won't come off they won't go up the pump um, into your heat exchanger providing you use lots of this impeller lubricant or washing up liquid ferry liquid what will happen is that they will do exactly that look no damage at all okay and you saw how easy without any lubricant it was for me to put this in by simply getting it into the right position and then pushing it down and then the next thing that happens is the o-ring goes on again lots of lubricant on there it will hold itself in position look so i have my face plate here let's get the camera a bit better. my face plate here what we're going to do is just we've got a piece of flat cory on here and we're just going to move that round in a figure of eight and then you turn it 90 degrees and a figure of eight again it doesn't have to be perfectly flat but something like this Corian top is much flatter than this um, than this chopping board or board extension we've got on the boat and you just figure of eight turn it 90 degrees figure of eight again now this is on 320 paper figure of eight 90 degrees and you'll see this is coming up nice and evenly look taking off the high spots you just keep going obviously don't go too mad we could do the same on the other side if we wanted to clean it up as you can see it's taken the high spots off so this plate is just slightly dished but that's okay let's you could see we could use either side it's just taking those marks off so that's good enough to use now that can go back onto the pump and uh, as I say we won't we won't put the uh, impeller back in because we don't want to damage it but we will make it so that the impeller with the pin are there on the pump ready to swap over uh, with the o-ring should they be needed and then if your bolts aren't worn just pinch them up and then do the last little bit just to pinch them home with a with a wrench or a, a spanner and uh, Bob's your uncle as they say so just as I said before on that pin two screwdrivers out it comes look easy as that no damage 
easy as that because you're pushing when you're pushing that out you're pushing it out on those metal pins not on the rubber so I'm going to put that back together not with the impeller in keep the new impeller with it on a piece of string or something so that this can be changed if there's a problem at sea and you, you know you can't get in there it's easier to change the pump but not leave that impeller in there because as you can see that one is still even me fiddling about with it still out of shape misshapen there we go uh, bolts i don't think we need them these are all in good condition got uh, some lubricant so i'm going to put that back in there um pretty easy um another top tip get this in lots of lubricant twist and push as you push it in twist and push lots of lubricant it doesn't matter if the lobes go round the wrong way trust me the moment that that engine turns over those lobes will all flick the right way around and as long as you've got plenty of lubricant on there it's not a problem you will not tear these off the only time you'll tear them off is if you don't put lubricant um, you don't need a tie wrap around them just lubricant push and twist and on they go um, okay if it's a bit cold, I guess you want to warm it up, put it in your pocket, rub it on the wife, do whatever you want to do. But um, yeah, they go in easy. It's not an issue. All right, I'm going to put this on now. Uh, I'll see if I can get the camera in there so that you can see, see it go on. But it is really tight in here. Let's have a go. Right. I wonder if the camera will go. engine started lots and lots of water coming out of there that's good I just drop down and check make sure there's no leaks but yeah jobs are good isn't it? 